Okay, I want to go over something that I saw, and it was this theory that you are seeing on your screens of a theory prior to the finale of Succession. I am a huge fan of Succession. My wife and I have watched from the very beginning. My entire family has actually watched it from the very beginning. And what I would say to you is this. This person made the call of the century. I'm curious to know. Is that what Jesse Armstrong actually thought? Is that how they actually played this out? Some outlets have said Wamsgans is a um, common name in the Midwest, although it appears to be quite uncommon abroad. But Tom Wamsgans is supposed to be from the Midwest in Kansas, to be exact. So taking all of that in, was it the unassisted triple play that Tom made as Wamsgans did in Game 7 of a World Series almost 100 years ago. He did have some assistance, of course. Now, let me just go through a few things that I sort of thought as I was watching this. Her theory about, you know, going through the definitions and names and meanings with Shiv meaning knife, it that one aligns. Shiv did definitely put the knife in Kendall and twist it for him not to become CEO, but she was right. And I think we all knew that she was right, even though it was, for some, a guilty pleasure to root for Kendall, even though all of them, to be very clear, are morally bankrupt and atrocious people. And I should have saved this for the end, but I'll just say it now. It sort of is interesting because we are now, at least me, thinking about the different stuff that came out about succession and with uh, Rupert Murdoch being separated from his wife. What happens when this man's time finally does come with Fox News? They are on the downslope. Um, they do have stiffer competition. Do they sell or does someone like Lachlan Murdoch take over completely? We really don't know. There were a few others that stood out to me. In the very first season, Roman Roy was in, I almost said Fox News, was in Waystar Royco's um, corporate office, right? And he said, we are all BS. All of this is BS. And then he mocks the workers like, oh, yes, tugging his tie. Oh, yes, serious. Very good. Very good. And yet at the end, you saw him on top of a table addressing Kendall and saying, we're BS. I'm BS. You're BS. We're all BS. There was foreshadowing there. There was someone telling, uh, I believe it was uh, Logan's banker a few seasons ago, who was also in a great show called, I believe, Magic City. Fantastic show if you haven't seen it. I think it was on Stars, And he tells Logan that their business is crumbling and it is going to crumble. That was something to think about. The angle of Tom and Greg, where Tom foreshadowed from one of the very first scenes that we saw, Greg, where he said, I got you. Come to me for anything. I do believe that he kept Greg on at the end, although Greg did screw him by, uh, very, in a very savvy way, translating what Matson and um, his confidants were saying from Swedish to English and being the plant that Kendall had. I do think Tom is going to keep Greg there because he can control Greg to give him one more chance. And some of you may be saying, but he was aligning with Kendall. Yeah, Kendall's out. There is no other Kendall in this situation. Greg is attached at the hip to Tom and Tom knows it. And beautifully, he puts the sticker when uh, Logan's kids were at his estate marking stuff that they wanted. Tom put the sticker right between Greg's eyes, which to me meant I claim you as mine, but it's also like, for lack of a better word, a target to say, I can screw you. I can F you. I can take you out any time that I want to by placing that sticker between Greg's eyes. thought it was beautifully done. All right, last points, a few. Roman smiling was something we all knew because Kendall called it and he was right. 
Roman doesn't actually want it. He had to build himself up to think he wanted it. All this stuff with Logan playing him. He played all of them at all times because that is the game that Logan played. There was trauma from Logan when he talked about how he lost like a family member. Um, I believe it was to polio at a young age. He has tons of trauma, not excusing bad behavior, of course. He has tons of trauma, not excusing the way he treats his kids. But that trauma was passed down and they all competed for his love and acceptance, which they were never going to get. And Roman was one part of that, obviously. So to see him at the bar smiling that he can cash out and it's all over and he doesn't have to worry about this crap anymore was somewhat relieving to many who liked Roman. But we all knew he didn't want it. He tried to be this hard ass. He tried to screw over Jerry, who, by the way, is still in the cards for staying on because I believe Tom is the one who uttered that she is a survivor. Um, so there's that angle. The Kendall angle, he said in a podcast that they did a few different takes. He said it was a very windy in the final scene. It was a very windy, chilly day. The railing was shaking. It was making this really terrible noise. And at one during one take, he tried jumping over the railing only for Colin, the bodyguard guy who was formerly with Logan, to save him. My wife said I'm glad they didn't put it in, and I agree. I completely agree. Because you want there to be that sort of cliffhanger and suspense, and we've also seen with many different shows. Sans like the Insecure, which I loved, right? You don't get closure anymore. They want you to talk about this. They want you to debate this. They want you to send tweets about it. They want you to stay engaged with it. They do not give you that closure. And I said at the end that I thought Kendall jumped. Um, lastly, Shiv. Here are my thoughts on Shiv. She knew that she couldn't get it, right? She knew that it was over for her once they anointed with a terrible drink, Kendall. And then to see that Tom and be given the information from the man himself that he was going to be CEO, she was at a crossroads of, do I stay with, do I stay in the camp of my brother who is a dick? and will probably ruin the company. Because as Tom once said to Kendall, I've seen you get f so many times and I've never seen Logan get f once. That was strong. Shiv was at a crossroads of do I support my brother or do I support Tom? Even if she doesn't want to do either one. And in the end, she made the right choice. She put the knife in Kendall and not Tom. And here's why. Kendall would only support her in a way that was not conducive to her survival in the entire show and legacy, for lack of a better word. With her screwing over Kendall and aligning with Tom, it was seeing that she is pregnant with Tom's baby that they would have the bloodline if the business is sustainable to then be the next CEO. So basically she is solidifying her family and her child's family down the road to be in a way grandfathered in to stay at the company unless of course Tom screws it up royally, which it seems like he wouldn't. And that last scene of Shiv and Tom in the car where he puts out his hand and she does not interlock the fingers shows the emotion and mentality and how difficult it is to stay in this even though she doesn't want to stay in it but knows that a baby is on the way and she has to support and protect the child and put them in a better position long term. There are my thoughts. I know this is an odd clip because I've never talked about this before. 
Honestly, I feel like I should have started this a long time ago because after every single episode, my wife and I would talk about it for a while. And um, whatever. <laughs> Probably should have started a while ago. I hope you all enjoyed the show because it was fantastic. Jesse Armstrong and company are true artists. And lastly, this is what it looks like when you have a writer's room full of creative people, great people. And this is why the studios need to pay the writers.